Everyone worries or feels anxious sometimes. It can come and go, it can wax and wane as our lives change. But for kids with anxiety disorders, the feelings of worry and fear can become all-consuming. These anxieties can be unrealistic, they can be overwhelming, and they can be very persistent. They can't be talked or reasoned out of it, and kids who suffer from this know it doesn't go away. When a child's anxiety begins interfering with their ability to live life or causes them to withdraw from family, friends, and activities they once enjoyed, it's really time to get some help. Understanding the different kinds of anxiety disorders can help kids get the treatment they need to feel better. In this video, we're gonna take a quick look at the different kinds of anxiety disorders. First, we're gonna talk about separation anxiety disorder. Children with separation anxiety become extremely upset when they're separated from their parents or caregivers. This isn't just occasionally clinging to mom or dad at daycare drop-off. That can be really normal. This happens when it's serious, when it's intense distress that doesn't get better and can seem really unusual for a child's age. So some of the signs of separation anxiety include worrying about parents getting sick or dying, worrying about caregivers getting lost or kidnapped, not wanting to actually go to school or refusing to go, or having meltdowns when it's time to separate from caregivers that don't really resolve within a few minutes. Separation anxiety mostly affects younger children, but it can also be present in older kids and even teenagers. Next, let's look at social anxiety disorder. Children with social anxiety disorder are painfully self-conscious. They can find it difficult to hang out with peers or participate in class because of this overwhelming fear or anxiety they will do something embarrassing. Gatherings like parties or big gatherings like sporting events or parades can also trigger a lot of social anxiety. Some signs of social anxiety include an extreme fear of doing something humiliating, avoiding social situations, feeling panicky during social situations, like some older kids may report that they're shaking or they're sweating or they're short of breath, while younger kids may have tantrums or they may be really tearful or cry. Kids might also worry that people are gonna judge them for being anxious, or they might be reluctant to meet new people or try new activities. We can also look at selective mutism, which in a way is what we would consider a very extreme version of social anxiety. Children with selective mutism have a hard time speaking in some places, like at school, and particularly when they're outside the home. Their anxiety goes beyond typical shyness and it does not resolve over time. Selective mutism is sometimes treated as stubbornness. People might think it's willful, but it's not that kids won't talk. It's the fact that they can't even begin to talk, even when they badly want to, so much is the impact of their anxiety. So some signs include a child who seems frozen with anxiety or might have a facial expression that's kind of flat when people are trying to speak to them outside of the home. And in reality, with selective mutism, children who are able to speak in some places but not others, for example, they might be unable to talk at school but have no difficulty speaking at home, that, that's kind of normal in the sense that parents will often tell us, oh, well, they speak just fine at home, but talking to a close family member or being outside the home causes them to freeze up. And that's really where the impairment comes in. The next disorder we're going to talk about is generalized anxiety disorder. Kids with Generalized Anxiety Disorder, or GAD, experience overwhelming, unshakable anxiety about a wide variety of things in their lives, especially their performance in school, in sports, or their interactions with friends and loved ones. These worries are unrealistic, they're pervasive, and they don't go away. Kids with GAD may seem irritable, they may withdraw from friends and family, or they might talk about their worries fairly constantly, or some kids, particularly young children, can report having physical symptoms like headaches or stomach aches that really are an expression of their anxiety. Other signs to watch out for are kids who say they feel out of control anxiety about many different things. Another thing to watch out for is kids who are very, very perfectionistic because it might be that their mind is kind of constantly spinning around that perfectionism and around wanting to do perfectly in school. And then there are kids who also might report that their anxiety makes it so they have trouble falling asleep or staying asleep or that they wake up and they're really anxious, any kind of trouble sleeping, or they feel really exhausted. Now we're going to look at panic disorder. When people talk about having panic attacks, that can be colloquial, and it may not necessarily really be what we mean when we're talking about the clinical severity of panic disorder. But if someone is having a clinically severe panic attack, panic disorder is usually at the root of the problem. Children with panic disorder have a history of panic attacks, which are very scary and very sudden surges of symptoms that can make kids or teenagers worry that they're dying or going crazy or that these symptoms are never going to end. They're never going to escape. Some signs of a panic attack include a kid telling you their heart is racing, or that they're sweating a lot, or that they feel like they're shaking, or they feel really dizzy, or they have a certain shortness of breath. Kids can also report at times they're worried they're going to die, or that the panic attack is actually going to stop them being able to breathe. Panic attacks are serious, but they're not dangerous. 
Kids may worry they're having a heart attack or dying, but once the attack passes, they will be okay. That said, panic disorder can be very frightening, very distressing, and can prevent kids from doing many things and going places they really enjoy because they fear that they might have a panic attack. Next, we'll look at specific phobias. Children with specific phobias have extreme fears about a particular thing. These things aren't typically considered dangerous, but can seem very scary to the child, and they're not something they can just get over. There are five common types of phobias. So the first type that we categorize is the animal type, or avoiding animals and bugs. The second type is the natural environment, where you might think about storms, or being afraid of heights, or being afraid of going in the water. The third type is blood injection injury, which might involve avoiding things like seeing blood, getting a shot, or having an injury that would cause you to bleed. The fourth type is situational, avoiding things like tunnels and bridges and flying. So the last type, which might include a number of things in that category, might include things like avoiding loud sounds like choking or vomiting, which many people find distasteful, but people with specific phobia actually find incredibly distressing. Next, we'll look at obsessive compulsive disorder, or OCD, which also involves intense anxiety. Children with OCD can experience disturbing thoughts, worries, or impulses called obsessions, and or they can also develop repetitive actions called compulsions to calm the anxiety caused by their obsessions. So some signs of OCD uh, can include repetitive hand washing, uh, repeatedly lining things up or performing a certain action a set number of times, or repeatedly asking for assurance from adults well beyond a question being answered. All the anxiety disorders we've discussed today can be treated with evidence-based therapy. That can be cognitive behavioral therapy, it can also be called exposure and response prevention, and it's sometimes in combination with medication. Treatment can be very effective in helping kids get free from anxiety that's dominating or limiting their lives. If you're concerned that you or a child you know may have an anxiety disorder, I encourage you to reach out to a mental health or medical professional in your area and make an appointment. To learn more, visit the Child Mind Institute Family Resource Center, which has hundreds of articles and guides to help you support children who are struggling with mental health or learning disorders. You can find the link in the description below. I'm Dr. Dave Anderson, a clinical psychologist at the Child Mind Institute. Thank you for watching. And if you found this video useful, please like and subscribe to our channel below.